Cause I sight from my soul I, Welcome back to another video with us. <laughs> um, today we come at you with a massive book haul. Um, like how many books? Like 20 or more? No, 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 there's more. Oh there gosh. is 40 something. Oh no. And it's because <laughs> we accumulated them over the last X amount of months and then we started Booktube and I want to show them. So you're going to get all of them. <laughs> We might do this in two parts. Yes. yes. I think this will be part one. So in this part, maybe we'll do about 20 books. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, get, <laughs> we'll go through them quickly. We won't go into too much detail. Yes. Otherwise, it just becomes a bit boring. Yeah. This is just to show you what we bought and show off our excitement, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So first up, we have The Girl from the Other Side. And this is a manga comic that I just happen to discover in Kinokunia because I always go to the manga section and check it out and it's story and art by Nagabe and it's actually really cool like yeah it's about uh, two kingdoms basically one is light one is dark and you have like these creatures that are kind of evil and people who don't want to have anything to do with them and somehow this little girl ends up going over to the wrong side and has this kind of creature looking after her and it, it's fabulous it's got some really beautiful um drawings in it and yeah i really like it i want to get the second one i just haven't bought it yet <laughs> uh second book uh we have eleanor oliphant is completely fine yes uh we both listened to this audiobook i listened to it first and then Mich made Michelle uh, listen to it because I loved it so much. Story of our reading lives. Yes. <laughs> uh, so if you don't know, this is a massively popular book. It was yeah. huge a couple of years ago. I mean, it still is, but anyway. Yeah, no, but it was on BookTube like heaps. Oh, heaps. At least a year and a bit ago. Yeah. So, so it's about Eleanor Oliphant. No surprises. <laughs> um, she is an incredibly interesting character. Mm. She lives in an entirely different reality to the rest of her the people around yeah. her she sees the world in a completely unique way um uh how would you describe it she's got a lot of conflicting <sighs> and views and like she's in denial about i would a lot of say things. she doesn't actually know how to exist as a person mm. a lot of things puzzle her really everyday normal things she just doesn't consider them to be normal She's horrified uh, by very simple things, by like people choosing to eat burgers in a cafe, for example. Yeah. All these very strange things that she has got from her family and her past, and it's really interesting to um, listen to, and I'm sure to read. So, mm -hmm. and you get like little tidbits that give you these hints of like yes. something very sinister and dark yeah. that's going on. It's um, great for um, a look at someone with uh, mental health issues. Mm. Um, such a unique take on that. And yeah, we really like it. <laughs> Hence why we already had a copy. Yes. But I saw <laughs> this one and could not resist getting it because I just loved it so much. And it's a hardback. So yes. that's why. <laughs> All right, next up we have All the Good Things by Claire Fisher. And I think, did you buy this one for me? Yes, for yeah. your birthday. It was for my birthday, which was... In October, we're going to ignore how long ago it was. It's part of the haul. So, I um didn't know much about this, and so I actually really like the synopsis on the back. So I'm just going to quickly read it out. So it says, 21 year old Beth is in prison. She knows she doesn't deserve to be set free, but her counselor Erica won't give up on her. She asks Beth to make a list of all the good things in her life. So Beth writes her story, from sharing silences with foster dad number one to flirting in the Odeon on Orange Wednesdays to the very first time she sniffed her baby's head. But at the end of her story, Beth must confront the bad thing. What is the truth hiding behind her crime? And does everyone, even a 100% bad person like her, deserve a second chance? So I really like the sound of this book. It sounds definitely like a book that I would love. Mm -hmm. um, Hence why I got it for you. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's very much kind of like psychologically charged trying to understand someone and where they're coming from and I really love those kinds of books um so yeah I'm super excited to read this one so next we've got A Bridge to Wiseman's Cove uh I like a lot of people in Australia what are you doing? 
Sorry, I heard something. <laughs> I got scared. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the house is falling. Down. No, it's not. Okay. So, a bridge to Wiseman's Cove. Uh, so, I, like I said, I had to read it, I think, in year seven, uh-huh. which means I was 12. 12, yeah, 12, 13. 12. So, um, I had to read it for school. Uh, it was an assigned text. Mm. Uh, Every I think everybody yeah. hates this except me and Michelle yeah. and my parents who who I read it with back then. Um, so it's an Australian book. It's about Carl yeah. and his um, younger brother Harley. Um, so they um, so they also have an older sister. I think is that right? Yes, there yes, are three of them. A, it's been a little while since I've read it. Anyway, so yeah. there's three of them. Their mother. Uh, constantly is is running away. She can't deal mm. with things. She can't handle having children, so she just runs away. Is there an alcoholic she then... thing as well? Oh, I can't remember. I think I remember something about a drinking issue. Anyway, highly dysfunctional family. Incredibly <laughs> dysfunctional. So she just leaves the kids to fend for themselves. Yeah. She eventually comes back. So, one of these times, she leaves, and she's just not coming back, not coming yeah. back. And it gets to the point where they don't really know what to do. So the older sister sends Carl and Harley off to Wiseman's Cove. Yeah. No, to... Uh, oh, no. Not actually Wiseman's Cove, but... he. Yeah, no, he does. They go to Wiseman's Cove. They go on a no, barge. No, they go to the beach. What's the beach called? Excuse us for a moment. Something beach. Wattle Beach or something. Wattle like Beach. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Memory. Look at us today. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> anyway, doesn't matter. So they go off to their aunt in Wattle Beach, yeah. and Carl is incredibly um, not not introverted, but he's incredibly anxious socially. Yeah, he, he is quite is, introverted too, though. He is, but he has a lot of social anxiety. Yes. He's very very insecure about his body, and he's about only... himself, about he's a teenager. He's like is fourteen, he a... fifteen. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's just about them being in this quite small uh, beachside town mm. and they slowly get more and more involved in the community mm. and it's a really, I think it's a really beautifully told story about just a sort of coming of age and Carl yeah. sort of finding himself and, and accepting himself yeah. and, and learning to, to be independent and... And also I think like what I took from it, I've only read it once and it was quite a while ago, so... Um, I will read it again to solidify my idea of it. But um, what I really liked about it was that you kind of saw Carl go on a journey to the point where he's still very young, but he starts to deal with his emotions, which I think is quite a powerful thing for anyone, especially when you're a teenager. So I really liked that Hmm. aspect of the book. But yes, like Billy said, coming of age, very um, nicely told, but most Australians hate this book. Yeah. <laughs> so if you go on Goodreads, really it's not got a great score and there's a lot of people saying no, 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 but give it a try. Mm. We like it. <laughs> I think, personally, I think when you have to study books in school, uh, they it destroys them. Yeah. It's like... That's what everyone said about yeah. the reviews. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I really think this is a genuinely good, really good story. I think story. so too. Oh, it's by James Maloney. I forgot. Oh, yes. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll put it all in the description as per usual. Yes. <laughs> Oh, we've got Hello, a kitty. kitty. Kitty cameo. <laughs> oh, kitty does not want to stay. He got flea treated yesterday. He's still He's mad at us. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Room by Anna Do- uh, Emma Donahue. <laughs> um, and this is a movie. I think it's still on Netflix. Probably. I don't oh, know. They might have taken Depends it off in Australia, you but <laughs> you can probably find it on Netflix or somewhere similar. I watched the movie before I read the book. Still haven't got to that, but I think this is going to be one of my next ones I read. It's a story of a girl who's abducted and um, she ends up getting raped by her captor and bears a child. And the story is about her and her child, who is now five, living in a place they call room because it's literally one room and everything's in it. Bed, bath. Sorry, cat's on his scratching post. Um, Yeah, and it's a very interesting book. I'm not going to say too much more about it because there's a lot of things to discover in it and and the story that unfolds, but what I really loved about the movie and that I hope I get from the book a bit more detail is the child's kind of outlook on the world because he's never really lived in the real world. Um, 
And yes, it was just really beautifully done in the movie, so I'm excited to read it. New edition. <laughs> Cat joined us. Hello. Cat hall. Oh, thank you. Okay. So we've got, um, and the ocean was our sky by Patrick Ness, illustrated by um, Rowena Kai. Yeah. Right. C A I. So it's a little confusing. Kai. Right. Rowena Kai. Um, I listened to this book, even though it's um, it's. It's like quite a, short, isn't it? It's a graphic novel. Yeah. Well, not exactly. It's illustrated novel. It's illustrated, yeah. Beautiful illustrations. Yeah. I, after I finished it, I just came and, and looked through the book to, to look at the illustrations. Yeah. Um, I mean, look at that. It's yeah, I know. It's beautiful artwork. So this is about um, the war between men and whales. And... Um, it's sort of like a retelling of Moby Dick. Yes, it is. But a bit skewed. It's Yeah, it's a sort of retelling, uh, another take, mm -hmm. however you want to say it. Yeah. But um, I, yeah, well, I mean, like, we love Patrick Ness and how yes. he writes and how he writes about people and their thoughts and emotions and, yeah. every, and their relationships and everything. So this is another one that I really, really love from Patrick Ness. Yeah, and we, um, I think we have quite a few Patrick Ness books in our collection now. It seems to be steadily growing, um, which is nice. And as we mentioned in another video, we met him and he was super sweet and that just like made all the difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, this is another book I received from Billy. <laughs> Oh, that was nice. Some breeze. <laughs> I fan you with my poetry. It's so hot in here. So next we have a Carol Ann Duffy um, poetry collection called mm. The World's Wife. Yes. Um, I bought this for Michelle <laughs> because she was she sort of mentioned flippantly that she was really interested in getting more poetry and yes. getting into more poetry, and I saw quite a lot of the British booktubers like Jean uh, and um, Jen Campbell and mm -hmm. stuff talking about Caroline Duffy, who's a Scottish poet. Poet. Yes. I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> poet. poet. <laughs> and writer, but poet. Um, anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so she's. I don't really know, I just have heard that she's amazing. Mm. I have not read any of her poetry. Yeah, but um, what I, sorry, what I like about this book and when I started to look at it, the reason I found it interesting in particular was because it says that it's kind of based on this saying, which is behind every famous man is a great woman, and it's kind of taking, like, uh, important figures from history and fiction and kind of giving you a spin on the side of that story with what the women were kind of influential in and things like that. Which sounded a bit interesting to me, yeah. so yes. Nice new perspective. Yeah. It's always good. Yep. Yeah. So that's that one. All right. Speaking of poetry, the next up, ugh, next up we have the Art of Taxidermy by Sharon Knott. 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 Sorry, that's just our little inner Julia and Julia joke from the movie. Julia <laughs> joke. Child. Um, anyway, it's K-E-R-N-O-T. It'll be in the description. Doesn't matter. So, yes, this is a novel in verse. Um, it's an Australian novel, we believe, because it was in the Australian section, so <laughs> probably. Um, I don't know much about it. Um, it sounds really interesting, um, and there seems to be, like, bits of grief and some turmoil going on in, like... The writing style and what she's talking about like the subject matter again i haven't fully read it i started reading it so i'm not really very far in but yes it's a very beautiful cover it's a novel in verse um there is a lot of good ratings for it and yes pick it up next up we have the accusation by bundy um and bundy is actually an anonymous author it's the name that he uses to kind of print his work because these are stories from inside North Korea and so I'll just say yeah he used the, this alias because yes. at the time that this was published he was still in North Korea yes so it's a non-fiction story about his experiences living in North Korea yes yeah and and collecting stories from others as and well others. Oh, yeah okay. right. so he wrote this book and obviously they're living in a dictatorship so mm. it's quite an interesting place a terrible place but 
an interesting place to read about and to understand because so little comes out of there. So Billy bought this for me as well because he has a problem buying too many books. I do not have a problem. <laughs> but no, I'm happy I got this one um, and all our other books for a fact. But yes, this was particularly up my alley. Again, I'm noticing a theme with a lot of these are kind of like, oh, very heavy, dark kind of topics. Dysfunctional, yeah. terrible humans. Yeah. yeah you know. Yeah. And uh, like I like it, but um, yes, I haven't read this yet, but I'm very excited to do so. So next we have Peridido Street Station by China Mielville. <laughs> Miel Mielville? Mielville. I think it's Melville. Yeah. It's and not Melville. No, but like, no I know, but Mielville. 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 Like, meow. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> so that's what it's about. So, <laughs> I've just talked uh, a fair bit about this book in my, the last video, uh, uh, what I'm currently reading. Mm -hmm. I won't go into too much. It's, broadly speaking, it's about a city new, called New Crobazon, uh, where humans live with these other weird creatures who are nothing like I've ever mm. heard about before. Like, they have all different... Very sci-fi kind of inspired. Very sci-fi fan yeah. fantasy. Um, they, so there's, um, Kepri who are, like, have all these different legs and mm -hmm. mouths and heads and they make, a, a what's it called, like, gland art or spit art. Oh, where nice. They, where they chew on these, like, berries Chal. and then spit it out. <laughs> yeah, it's really bizarre. Charming. <laughs> Weird. And then there's, like, humans who, who, or, or people who get, who commit crimes mm. and then they are remade. Um, mm. So they have with terrible punishments. Wings uh, surgically infused into their backs, and then the wings start rotting and decaying, mm. and the whole city is rotting and decaying. Sounds and lovely. It's, <laughs> and it's a really fascinating world. A really yeah. fascinating story. Um, it is intense. It is mm. dense. It is a challenging read, but I am enjoying it which is unusual for me yeah but i am enjoying it billy hates dark themed books so Isn't that's it? quite interesting but yes yeah, you want to know more check out the march currently reading for billy yes all right next up we have this beauty <laughs> how nice is this cover before i even tell you what it's about just admire this <laughs> <Marvel that. laughs> um this is useless magic lyrics and poetry by florence welsh which is um the lead singer of florence and the machine and we love them. Mm -hmm. We saw them live when they came to Sydney a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I particularly love her. She just looks like she's perpetually stuck in the 70s. And I love it. <laughs> um, but yes, Billy also bought me this book for my birthday. And she's got some like really beautiful old photographs and little bits of her writing and crossing things out. And, and just these beautiful sayings and poetry and lyrics that she has written and I love this book it's really beautiful really nice um yeah and it's like cloth bound too and in the back it's got this embossed writings and it says songs can be incredibly prophetic like subconscious warnings or messages to myself but I often don't know what I'm trying to say till years later or a prediction comes true and I couldn't do anything to stop it so it seems like a kind of useless magic <laughs> so yes this is nice. Go and get it. I like it. <laughs> so next up, we again have another China Mievo uh, <laughs> Mie book <Bill. laughs> called uh, Kraken. Yeah. The Kraken? Or no, Kraken? it's just Kraken. Kraken. Um, this one, I have not started reading yet. So <laughs> as far as I remember, um, the way it was sold to me was there's this underground, um, like, cult religious cult group yeah. who think <laughs> that the the new exhibit of this giant octopus squid thing uh, at the museum right. is actually a god and they need to resurrect it whoa <laughs> okay <laughs> so, i don't remember you telling me about this one this is a fairly new one that billy picked up how cool like that last sound? month but that sounds like something I'd want to read. Yeah, it's really bizarre. So I'm very keen to, <laughs> to read this one. As soon as I get done with Peridido Street, yeah. uh, I want to start the Kraken. Sounds like China Melville has mm -hmm. some <laughs> Melville has some interesting ideas <laughs> in yes. his novels. Yes, bizarre. There's there's lots of others. I mean, I, w I won't talk about them yet. But yes, very interesting. Can't wait to start it. Enjoy.
What? Mm. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Next up, we have The Mortal Word by Genevieve Cogman. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this because in Billy's February wrap-up, he talked quite a bit about this story and the uh, Invisible Library as a series. But uh, behind me here, you can see we have all the others. And this is the latest one. This is actually my favourite in the entire series. Um, it's super dark, uh, full of politics of the world. Um, and yeah, I really love it. And if you want to know a little bit more information, go and check out Billy's February wrap up. But yeah, oh, it's sorry, such a beautiful book. <laughs> so your favorites of 2018? Um, it wasn't this one. It was the oh. Invisible Library, the first book. Oh, but God. yes, if you want a bit more of an overview of, of this series, you can check out those two and we'll link them in the description below. So next we have a book that I got for Christmas from my parents mm. <laughs> called Waiting for the Biblioburo by, uh, if I remember, Mel uh, Melanie Brown? Monica Brown. Monica Brown. Eh, it was Monica. close. Nearly. Um, okay. And there's so. an illustrator as well. Oh, oops. Um, illustrated by John Parra. John Parra. Yeah. Uh, so, this book, they got me this book in particular because for, I'm starting to be a library assistant, yeah. um, and for one of the assignments we had to do a presentation on, on a library topic, mm -hmm. and my presentation was on pop-up libraries which which incorporated sort of traveling libraries mm -hmm. which this is the, so the biblioburo is um, it's a real thing a, a real yeah yeah it, it's a real guy <laughs> who travels around Colombia on with donkeys carrying books around he's a primary school teacher mm -hmm. that was really passionate about getting books to the, his, the kids in the community yeah. who don't who don't have access to books. Their families don't have the money to buy yes. them. And they're so they cut can't. off. They're in such rural areas. So, like a lot yeah. of the parents can't even read. So yeah. he teaches the kids to read and then the kids teach their parents to read. Yeah. So it's, it was really it's, a, fascinating. it's a real system. And actually in a lot of different countries, people have set this up. Yeah. So this book was written about him. And um, it's just such a wonderful... Um, such a wonderful story about yeah. this little girl who's, you know, hears him coming and then she goes and gets a book and then he's so excited and then keeps waiting and waiting and then yeah. finally he eventually comes and uh, it's just such and a beautiful little... it's beautifully little, illustrated uh, as well. It's just stunning. a really nice kind of joyous thing to look at. Even if you're not a child, obviously we aren't children, but we love children's books mm. because I'm studying psychology now, but I used to be in early childhood education. Um, and so we have an entire bookshelf over here that you cannot see in frame that is filled to the brim with children's books. <laughs> so, yes, this is just one that we particularly love. Yeah. Next up, we have The Collector by John Fowles. I think it's Fowles. Yeah. Um, I just finished reading this and I think it took me about three or four days. I have to check Goodreads to be sure. But about three or four days, um, I flew through this book because... It was intense, uh, dark, psychological thriller, which I really love. Um, and I finished it last night and I was so upset <laughs> because it is so heart-wrenching, but it is such a good book. Um, it is about a man who abducts a girl and holds her captive. Um, not much plot goes on, but the way that he has written these characters is so vivid and the main character, he is so strange and not like any other person I've, I've known like in real crime stories or in fictional crime stories. He just does not fit the kind of uh, sociopath, psychopath model that you often see these characters modelled after. He's just so uniquely different and what I really liked about this book is it was set in the 60s and that's when it was written and the kind of joy of the female character in this, her name's Miranda, the joy of Miranda that she's trying to keep going in such a terrible situation was written really well and I just I loved that character so much. Um, but yes, if you really like psychological thrillers I think this is for you. Just be warned that it's so heart-wrenching but so beautiful, it just like hit me in my feels. So yes, this is a good book, read it. So here we have the collection of the Bronte sisters uh, stories. Yeah. 
Um, I've only ever read Wuthering Heights. Yeah, and I've only ever read Jane Eyre. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear the cat scratching on his scratching post, but yes. Um, I think you got this for my birthday again. Yes. Yes. And so we have Jane Eyre, we have Villette, we have Wuthering Heights, and we have The Tenant of um, Wildfell Hall. And yeah, I wanted to read more classics, and so did Billy. And these are beautiful, <laughs> if you can't tell. <laughs> Pull them out. I think you can pull it out. Oh. No, we can't. Hold on. Wait. Do a little bit of a flop. <laughs> okay. I got one. I got one. Wait, wait, wait. Which one? Oh, I got two. Whoops. Okay. Hello. <laughs> we have Weathering Heights. And yeah, they're cloth bound and they have this beautiful kind of embossing on them. Yeah. They're really nice. I can't wait to read the rest of these because I know that they're very famous, of course. I just kind of started with fantasy, not with classics. So now I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have two cookbooks. Um, and I think there's a nice mix of different kinds of books in this haul. Um, this one I received from my mum and this one I received from Billy's parents for Christmas. But now they're our books because we live together and we cook together so yes um this is salt fat acid heat you might have seen it on netflix mm -hmm. we saw that first and i was obsessed um it's by samin nozrat and i just love the way she talked about food um her the italian influence because hello italian food is delicious um and also what i really love about this book in particular is all like the illustrations and the charts and it's so scientific which I really love. Mm. Um, yes, and we keep making buttermilk chicken <laughs> from this recipe book, <laughs> like, all the time. <laughs> so, yes. Note to future Billy, uh, put in the graphic about the three figs. Three figs? Yes. What three figs? It'll make sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'll hold this. Okay. So, this one is, as it says on the cover... <laughs> about sourdough bread yes. and making sourdough bread. Michelle's been very interested in in making sourdough bread from scratch Yeah. with varying success. Well, I did it once. <laughs> <laughs> I did it once. Like, there's a whole process you go, to, go through. But I think... I know what went, went wrong, mm -hmm. but this book just has some beautiful instructions with pictures and I was so excited to receive it that now I want to do it again. Mm. Um, it was just the bread was a little chewy, but mm. I think I did pretty well. We made you two did. loaves from scratch. Hello. You did. You did but yes, well. um, this is just a beautiful book. And even if I didn't use it, which I will, I would just want to stare at it all day. <laughs> it's got really nice photography and little like illustrations and it's just beautiful. And I, I'm going to try to say the author names for you, oh. but whew, they're a bit difficult. So we have Casper Andre Lug. That's fine. This next one, Martin Ivor Veen Fjeld, maybe? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Not great. I'll put it in the description so you can find it. Um, but yes, these are our two cookbooks that we got. So we've got The Arrival by Sean Tan. Yes. This is, I think, what is called a silent graphic novel, mm. which basically means only illustrations, no text, no words whatsoever. Yeah, and I think this has been around on Booktube a fair amount as well. It's quite popular. I've seen yeah. a few Booktubers doing it. I found out about Sean Tan um, through doing early childhood education again. We were recommended certain authors, and Sean Tan was one of them. Um, yeah, he's incredible. So this one is about um, immigrants coming to Ellis Island in mm. New York mm. in um, an era that I can't remember right now. Oh yeah, I'm not entirely sure off the top of our heads, but anyway. Anyway, um, he he does all the illustrations. Yeah, he's an amazing artist. Uh, he is amazing. This is a beautiful... I mean, look at that. I know. That's possibly one of my favourites. Yes. <laughs> and so with that this scene. book came the sketches that are that accompany it and kind of some ideas about where he got the inspiration for the um, illustrations in this book. And if I can just find it, what you had opened a minute ago. Oh, ah, yes. Here we go. There we go. Right. There's a small picture right here, which I will come a bit closer. This is the hall that he got inspiration and he turned it into this, which is just crazy. Like, I like to draw, but 
<laughs> Jesus, mate. This is crazy stuff. But yes, we are obsessed with this book and this. <laughs> I just can't stop looking at it. Mm. Um, also, it's a beautiful story. Definitely. And I think there's something really powerful about being able to tell a story with no words. Yeah. I love art. Always had an appreciation for art. And I think that that's quite phenomenal if you have that skill. Um, so yes, check out Sean Tan. The Arrival is amazing, but he also has a bunch of other amazing books mm. too. Okay, so that's just part one of our book haul. Yes. We can't do any more because <laughs> our feet are tired and we are boiling to death. Yeah, the room so... we film in is, is like an oven sometimes. <laughs> in case you haven't noticed, we are sweating yes, and melting. Yes, as we're filming. <laughs> so, part one, the part two we will hopefully get up soon. Yeah, because... hopefully soon after this one, not yeah. too far away. We're trying that's to get the books that are on the floor. <laughs> back in the bookshelf <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i hope you enjoyed that please like and comment and subscribe uh see you in the next one bye, bye.